So the next topic we're going to be discussing is hypertension. Now we can't diagnose hypertension with just one test. We're going to need to do more than one test. So usually we're going to have to measure blood pressure on at least three to six different occasions because there's other things that can cause hypertension such as alcohol, drugs such as sympathomimetic drugs, antidepressants, NSAIDs, cyclosporine, caffeine, thyroid, or even an excessive salt intake. So what we want to do is first we want to diagnose and classify our hypertension. First thing I want to point out is normal blood pressure. <clears throat> normal blood pressure now is classified as a systolic less than 120 and a diastolic less than 80. So normal, you have to have both systolic less than 120 and diastolic less than 80. Okay. And prehypertension is going to be uh, classified as either or. What I mean by that is either they have a systolic between 120 and 139 or a diastolic between 80 and 89. Either or. You only need one in order to have a diagnosis of prehypertension. But right now we're not talking about normal or prehypertension. We're talking about hypertension. So we're going to classify this into stage one and stage two hypertension. Stage one hypertension is either or again. So it's a systolic of 140 to 159 or a diastolic of 80 to 89. Stage two hypertension is going to be defined as a systolic greater than or equal to 160 or a diastolic greater than or equal to 100. Okay. Um, and diabetes or renal disease, uh, hypertension is going to be defined as a blood pressure over 130 over 80. Now, now that we know how to stage them, how to classify primary hypertension, we're not talking about secondary, what we want to do is manage these patients, okay? So in primary hypertension, if they're stage one, the first line is always going to be therapeutic lifestyle changes. So what do I mean by this? We want to have a low salt diet, less than two grams a day. We want to make sure they diet. Uh, they have weight reduction. You want to limit their alcohol consumption because remember we talked about alcohol being um, a factor that can cause hypertension. So for men, we want, we want to limit it to less than two alcoholic beverages a day. And we want to limit it to less than one alcohol, alcoholic beverage for women. Um, if the first line therapy, which is therapeutic lifestyle changes, is ineffective, then we're going to go to pharmacologic therapy. And basically, first, we want to look at the patient's history. Um, and we're going to choose the drug based on history. But for the most part, we're going to use either a calcium channel blocker, an ACE inhibitor, or an ARB as our second line after lifestyle modifications. Stage 2 hypertension. For stage 2, we're going to do lifestyle modifications and drugs. So we're going to use a thiazide and another drug. And that other drug is either going to be a calcium channel blocker, ACE, or beta blocker. If the patient comes in with hypertension and they have a difference of 30 millimeters per mercury in both arms with a tearing chest pain that refers to the back, what are we going to think this is? We're thinking this is possibly what? Aortic dissection, right? So the first thing we're going to do is IV so sodium nitroprusside plus a beta blocker. Our diagnostic test is going to be a transesophageal echocardiogram. And we're going to have to do surgery if it's a type A dissection. And then after the acute phase, we can do calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, methyl dopa, clonidine, or even reserpine. Now, if the patient has a diastolic blood pressure of greater than 120 to 130, but they have symptoms of end organ damage, our first initial diagnostic test is going to be an EKG. And if it shows an MI, we've got to go to nitroglycerin. But if the EKG rules out MI, this is a hypertensive emergency, so we've got to do nitroprusside and labetalol. And we've got to make sure that we don't reduce that blood pressure more than 25% in one to two hours. So let's talk about special populations and how to treat them when they have hypertension. 
uh, patients that have coronary artery disease, we can use beta blockers or ACE inhibitors. What are some contraindications of beta blockers? We know asthma is a contraindication for beta blocker. Um, COPD is a contraindication for beta blocker, and so is heart block. Okay. Side effects of beta blockers, they can cause asthma. They can cause bradycardia. It can cause CHF, and it can also cause hypertriglyceridemia. Okay. Um, another option for CAD is going to be ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors, um, what are going to be some contraindications? Pregnancy. Hyperkalemia is a contraindication. Side effects are going to include cough, angio, um, angioedema, uh, as well as hyperkalemia. Chronic renal insufficiency. In this case, we want to try to give these patients a loop diuretic, okay? And um, you want to also remember that, um, yeah, loops, loop diuretic is what you're going to give in a patient with a chronic renal insufficiency. If the patient is pregnant, we know that we're going to give methyl dopa, hydralazine, or labetalol. If the patient has heart failure, we're going to go with ACE inhibitor, nitrates, or hydralazine. And in the African-American population and elderly, we're going to go with diuretics and calcium channel blockers. So this is everything that you need for hypertension, how to test for it, how to stage it, and how to treat hypertension in special populations. We're going to be doing a secondary hypertension algorithm soon. Um, it's much more in depth, um, but this is primary hypertension. Enjoy.